Hey everybody! Last Outrider here, bringing you the fluff you need with the story of who is the Toxicrin? Who is the Malceptor? Where did these motherfuckers come from? Nobody knows. And apparently, nobody thinks it's worth making a video out of either. Because once again, while there may be hundreds of videos on these two new figures, I have yet to find anything that really explains the story behind them. And for me, that's what 40K is all about. Hell, I think eventually you're going to find that Black Library is going to become more profitable than the miniatures with with this Horus Harris series and everything going. Anyways, <clears throat> monstrous adaptations. <clears throat> what are we dealing with here with the Tyranids? Since our, and I'm reading this since our first encounter with the Tyranids in the year 589 of millennium 41 imperial scholars have been working to uncover their secrets one of their first startling discoveries was that the tyranids don't simply evolve to overcome unexpected battlefield situations instead the hive mind consciously creates new bioforms adapting existing genuses to counter each new threat encountered. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that one sit for a bit, but when they sit there and say they don't simply evolve to over... Uh, from what I just understand, they just fucking described evolution. The hive mind consciously creates new bioforms, adapting existing genuses to counter each new threat encountered but that's not evolution apparently that's something else that we don't have a name for it yet um <clears throat> the mouse scepter is an adaptation of the zoanthrope genus a tyranid familial grouping that uses psychic powers to manipulate terrify and destroy their foes like zoanthropes, the Malceptor is a psychic powerhouse. The whole upper body given over to the vast organic processor through which it conducts the power of the hive mind. Unlike its smaller cousins, the Malceptor's mind node is so vast it can't levitate under its own psychic power. A problem easily solved by the hive mind. It simply built the Malceptor's body able to carry its massive cranium, a tough bonded exoskeleton, and crowned like carapace, also providing protection from enemy fire. Bam! So that's, that's cool. Nothing to say about that. That's just that's just awesome. I like it. There's a lot of thoughts going behind the Tyranids. There's probably a very simple reason for that. The Tyranids are really the only army in GW that they have 100% uh, 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 IP rights for. Ah, wait. Sisters of Battle. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> these guys... We'll talk about that later. Next! The Toxicrin comes from an entirely different genus okay so the toxicrin and the malceptor are not related in any way shape form at all the toxicrin comes from a completely different genus it comes from that of the venomthrope the Venomthrope's toxin sacs make them especially dangerous to lightly armored infantry. But their flailing tentacles lack the strength to penetrate armor. Enter the Toxicrin, combining horrifically potent toxins with the monstrous bulk of a large tyranid organism. The Toxicrin has the strength and size to grapple with bigger foes.
its tentacle limbs stretching wider than an imperial bane blade super tank while its razor sharp weapon symbiotes and feeder tendrils are its primary form of attack the toxicrin also has a less obvious way of killing its foes imperial scholars thought the smog emanating from its chimneys was no more dangerous than that given off by the venomthropes they were wrong okay there you go so that is the fluff for these two guys um next i'm going to go over the rules for them in in the second part of this video but i always like to do my fluff first so you actually know what the hell i'm talking about because really if you get the rules for these things without explaining the story behind them it's just it's just it's just mindless mindless dice rolling until then until then i shall say bye